Hi, Nikki. Welcome to the Smash Around Ceiling podcast. I'm so happy that you're here. Hi, Barbara. It's great to be here. Thank you so much for the invitation. You are more than welcome. So um, I'd love for you to start us off by just introducing introducing yourself. What is it that you do? Tell us a little bit about yourself, um, because I know you can do a much better job than I can. Yeah, sure, no problem. So um, I'm Nikki, as you've already introduced me. Um, I'm a qualified health and wellness coach. Um, and I, I specialize in um, in helping women in leadership in midlife. So it tends to be age 45 plus um, to, to manage the ups and downs that come with um, health and wellness and life at that particular stage, um, um, particularly around things like managing stress, banishing fatigue, which is which is one of the kind of key things that uh, impacts women at this particular age and, and kind of feeling energized in body and mind. And I do that really through simple, sustainable lifestyle habits that are easily integrated into that individual's life, yeah. basically, um, into daily life. Amazing. And some of these tips, are, I'm assuming, they can be transferred to men as well, could they? Or is it specific? Yes. Yeah. No, absolutely. So as a health and wellness coach, it, I mean, everybody, in my view, can benefit from working with a health coach. There's nobody that can't benefit from working with a health coach. Um, it's definitely a new um, mindset and culture that we need to embrace in this country. But yeah, absolutely. Men um, and and of all ages. Um, yeah. It just happens to be where I've specialised so far. But yeah. um, I'm totally open to working with everybody. So if anybody wants to to work on their health and wellness, then uh, absolutely I can help them. And I completely agree. I think it's something I've certainly started to see a shift now with people prioritizing their health, which is really lovely for me to see. Um, considering, you know, in the past, especially in people in leadership positions, we tend to, you know, have this belief of working harder and, you know, just putting out, putting everything into it. And health, it gets shunted down our, our the pecking order a little bit. But I have this belief that health is wealth right you we unless we're we're looking after ourselves we're not able to do anything else so I completely agree it's it needs to be a lot more of a priority yeah absolutely. um now I know this is this is something that's so dear to your heart because of your own journey so could you let's let's kick off with learning a bit more about where your what happened to you then in, in terms of your journey what what led you to this point can you think of like a pivotal moment that was that kick-started all of this for you um, it's an interesting question, actually, because I probably didn't know at the time that the pivotal moment was the pivotal moment. Those are the um, best moments, though, aren't they? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So it's probably been, you know, something that's kind of happened gradually. I mean, if I was to pick out specifically a pivotal moment, then it would probably be the moment at which I um, took the decision to leave my long term corporate career. Um, and move away from it to become a health coach, to step away from that, to retrain as a health coach um, and to kind of set my own business up. And that was as recently as uh, 2020. Um, but I guess the reality is that um, the whole journey process, if you like, started much earlier than that. Um, and that was what led me to eventually making this decision to move into health coaching. Um, and, you know, and that was um, probably... I mean, I've always been an active person, um, but running is something that I took up um, in my early 40s. And I think that that's what my journey kind of through running is what's kind of led me to kind of where I am now. So the pivotal moment was possibly at the time when I decided to start running. But, you know, it's uh, yeah, at, at the time there was nothing behind it other than getting fit and doing something different. Yeah. So tell me about that, because I have a love-hate relationship with run running. I start it every so often. We might talk about that later on. I start every so often. I've recently started, you know, because it's New Year. It's a great time to start. And, yeah, I, I sometimes enjoy it, sometimes don't. But look, tell me about when you started and why why you took running up. Well, I took running up for a very, a very unusual reason that probably most of the people don't. I actually took running up initially through FOMO. Uh -huh. So, yeah. So I was I was working for a company at the time that had um, some um, sort of a group of active people in there. And a number of them, I'm from the Northwest, and a number of them signed up to do the Great Manchester Run, um, which at the time was a 10K. 
Um, and they were talking about going out on training runs after work and building their way up to do this run. And I thought to myself, even though I wasn't a runner, I'd never really done any running other than a bit of cross country at school. I used to go to the gym at the time and sort of spend about 10 minutes on the treadmill alongside some of the other things that I did. So I wasn't I wasn't particularly a runner, but it just felt like something that I wanted to join in with and didn't want to miss out on. So I kind of signed up for the race and joined in basically as a complete non-runner. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Because um I can understand that, especially if you like you're all working together and everybody's doing it and everybody's talking about it and, and you're not. Yeah, you know, I can understand you just wanted to get get involved. So how did it go? That right, it went really well. I was really happy with what I do. I ended up doing most of my training on my own as it turned out. Um but um, the race itself was just sort of the most incredible experience. You know, it was a, it was a big race to start off with, a uh, big city race. And um, the whole experience was just, was just incredible. Um, I didn't actually think when I finished it that I would ever even necessarily sign up for another. You know, I mean, that was my first experience of going anywhere near a running race. You know, I'd watched the London Marathon for years on TV, but kind of never actually been anywhere near it. And then I left that job. Um, I actually moved abroad to work. I moved over to Portugal to work for a while, which was a very intense job in itself and didn't leave me much time for doing a little bit of sort of ticking over every now and again, just sort of, you know, a little bit of, of trotting around. But I didn't I didn't I didn't think I'd taken running up particularly at that stage. It was when I came back from Portugal a couple of years later um, at a time when it was it was um it was actually the time of the financial crash the original financial crash over here and it was difficult i needed to try and find myself a new job etc um and that was when i got more got back into the running really because i was trying to find myself a job so that was kind of my morning was applying for jobs and doing cvs and cover letters and everything and i couldn't do it all day so then i would take a break and in the afternoon i would spend my time being active and kind of going out and 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 doing a little bit of running and that was so that was it was sort of my second the second bite at things where I took it up more seriously yeah isn't it funny how how that happens so I just want to go back a step if that's all right Nikki because again I'm really curious about your first race because when I took up running um when I said I took up running I had a year of running so I think it was 2019 and I started because I want I really wanted to do the Leeds 10k and a 10k for me just seemed huge like it was like the this the same as running a marathon you know it just felt massive felt massive and that was in July and I started training about this time of year and just going through that training process was really interesting for me because the the mindset struggles that I went through of uh, uh, I'll never be able to get to 5k let alone to 10k and and trying to get myself you know running a little bit further every thing every single day did you experience the same thing did you learn anything about yourself whilst you were training for that very first event yeah I mean it's quite a long time ago now so it was 20 it was 2004 so um so I've I'm having gone through so much since in my running journey that that sort of feels like quite a long time ago now so sort of yeah the specifics of that but I've I've kind of increased you know like my my, my distance now is marathon and ultra marathon and, and and I guess I've gone through the same phases every single time and and yes you're right um it feels impossible until it's done which I think is yeah. you know something that's you know came from Nelson Mandela or something or somebody like that which is yeah. a quote that I absolutely love and I think it relates to kind of so much in life and so many areas um and 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 yeah it did it I mean it it felt it felt huge it felt like something that other people do not something that yeah. I do and you know it was a case of how do I how do I get there how do I get from a standing start to this position that I want to be in um, and yeah, like upping your distance every time, um, you know, whether it's just an extra five minutes, it kind of felt like, how am I going to get another five minutes further? How am I going to get another five minutes further? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, in other distances, how am I going to get a mile further? How am I going to get a mile further? Mm -hmm. um, but our bodies are amazing things. And, you know, the combination of what our bodies can do and what we allow our mind to believe enables us to get there. Mm, yeah that is so so interesting isn't it you're right you're absolutely right our bodies really are 
um, amazing things. And I think what, what we tend to do is give up in our minds before our body gives up. Absolutely. So, so there you were, you ran, you were running during the day and um, applying for jobs in, in around that. What happened next? Um, so what happened next was a leaflet dropped through my front door um, advertising a local half marathon. And um, I thought to myself, oh my goodness, like, wouldn't it be the most amazing life achievement <clears throat> if I could run a half marathon? Mm. Um, and, <clears throat> excuse me, and I thought to myself, okay, um, let's set that as a goal. Um, let's see if I can train myself to and actually complete a half marathon, which for me just sounded well out of my comfort zone, um, well outside what I should or would be able to achieve. Um, and just it felt like it felt like a bucket list thing to tick off. Mm -hmm. So what happened next was I uh, started training myself for that and I entered the race. Um, and I did my first half marathon. Amazing, amazing. So what 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 blocks did you go through or just what process did you go through? Was it the same? Because I know you just said, and again, I'm finding this really, really interesting. You said that it doesn't really matter what distance it is, you go through the same process. And it's that old saying, isn't it? New level, or just, uh, new level, new devil, where it's, it's more new level, old devil, isn't it? So it's the same thing over and over again, your same blocks. Did you did you find that at that point? Yes, but probably heightened because, um, you know, the longer the distance you go and the more you believe it's not something that you do, it's something that other people do. And it's and you kind of you almost kind of put it on a pedestal up there. You know, is it possible for me to do this? I guess maybe the the, the blocks or the hurdles kind of feel a little bit bigger, mm. you know, because you, you kind of feel like you're you're going to the next level. You're kind of achieving yeah. to the next level. So. So, yes, very similar. Um, and obviously, you know, the distances become longer and the way that you train becomes different. And so then overall, it kind of just becomes more tiring and it sort of puts more more strain on you and, and more strain on your body and that sort of thing. But, yeah, very, very, very similar. But, um, yeah, you kind of build it up into your mind as, as, as can I really do this? Can I really do this? And how did you get past that? Um. I don't know whether I've got any particular um any particular hacks for it. I think that um I think it's just it's a part of it's a part of my mindset really. It's a part of my um I mean I do I think all of us suffer from a lack of self-confidence at time from from time to time. And I would say that, you know, I definitely do. So it's not a case of I always believe that I can do it. But I always believe that I can give it a go. Mm. Yeah. And that in itself is incredibly powerful, isn't it? So because that's where that's where confidence comes from. Just trying, just being brave, just, you know, putting yourself out there. Uh, and I remember, again, my distance is nowhere near yours. Um, but for the 5K was a massive hurdle for me. And I remember um, battling with my mindset for ages going up, oh, you know, every set of time I was going out running oh, I can't do this, it's too far, I'm going to get tired. And giving myself um, a get out of jail free card, you know, and off the hook. So I'll oh, walk now, nobody will know. And oh, don't worry about this. Just walk to that lamppost, it'll be fine. And then I remember one day I got close to 5K and I it was the closest I've ever been. And I looked at my phone and it was, you know, so close, but I was so tired. And all of a sudden my inner coach kicked in and it was, it was, I remember the shift really clearly when I, I, my inner critic just stopped and my inner coach went, you're not stopping now. You are, if you have to drag yourself, you are going to run to that. And I literally just started running up and down. So until I got the fight, the, the 5k. Um, but I remember vividly that shift of voice in my head of no, you, you are going to keep going. And it, even though I've been working in, in this space for such a long time, it was such a nice thing for me to observe for myself that actually the, the, that inner coach can be as loud as your inner critic. We just don't turn the volume up enough often. 
Yeah, I mean, that's incredible. I mean, first of all, 5K, goodness. I mean, you know, I, I kind of skipped the 5K level initially because I started at 10K and then and then when I did more running, I kind of went back to 5Ks. And even nowadays, now I would say I would much rather go and run a marathon than a 5K any day because 5K for me is just like, it's just hard work. But it's the kind of thing that actually you never get out of. So, um, I mean, I, I don't know where we'll go with this conversation and maybe I'm going to be, maybe I'm maybe I'm jumping on here. But I mean, I've just done, I just, um, at the beginning of December, I just did Malaga Marathon. It was my 26th marathon. 26th marathon. And that kind of voice, so I call it bargaining with myself and I do it on a regular basis and that never leaves you. It never goes away. I had it when I just did that marathon in December at 17 miles, you know, I, I it was feeling really hard and I was thinking, oh, I could just have a little walk now. And then in my voice, a voice in my head kicked in and said, 17 miles, you're joking. You've still got such a long way to go. You're yeah. not having a break before you get to 20 miles. Just get on with it. So I would bargain with myself to get to 20 miles and then you can have a walk. And I got to 20 miles and I thought, right, you've done 20, now get to 21. I got yeah. to 21. Now you've done 21, get to 22. And I have this constant kind of bargaining with myself in my head. And it's almost like give yourself a target where you allow, where you allow yourself the opportunity to kind of do, you know, take the break or do whatever it is that you want, then you get to that point and then you re-kick that bargaining process in again and push it on a little further and push it on a little further. So true. Yeah. I and I can completely relate to that. You know, just get to that lamppost and you can you can walk or no, 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 you're gonna just go a bit further. And that's not just in running, that's just in life, right? You can do that all the time. Um, and it's a great habit to get into, isn't it? Just to just to start to stretch yourself every single day and every single go. How, just to, first of all, I don't want to let it slip that you've done 26 marathons. Did you say, because yeah. we kind of brushed past that. Oh, we've done 26 marathons, you know, as though we've just walked to the shop. It's amazing. This is such an amazing feat. Is running part of your life now? Is it? Is it an ingrained and a non-negotiable now? It is, yeah. It's a it's a, a non-negotiable part of my of my day, my my week, um, my life. And um you know, it has become um, one of my my life habits, mm. um, you know, which supports supports me in so many ways, physically, mentally, emotionally, socially, you know, like lots of different ways. And it is now kind of a, a, a part of my habits, which is, you know, so relevant for my health coaching work, because essentially, as from a health coaching perspective, that's what I'm an expert in. It's around behavior change and habit change mm. and helping people to implement lifelong habits. So, yeah, it is. It is part of my my yeah my habits. And and you mentioned that it, it it supports you in all the different ways. What specifically? How is it? How is it doing that? Um. So physically, it keeps me. You know, it keeps me well. It keeps me um energized. It keeps me um you know in shape. It keeps me fit. Um. It helps protect me against kind of you know long term um diseases and and illnesses that that come naturally as part of aging anyway. Um, mentally, um, you know, I get an incredible boost just from going out for a run. So, you know, we do get the the endorphins and things like that that, that kick in that will help, but it, it, it can help with spark and creativity. So if I have days when I'm struggling to think about content to write or, you know, what I want to do next, it can help clear the head and it can, it can, it can help, you know, um, kind of bring some creativity. But also mentally, it can help with things like, um, you know, setting goals and achieving goals and success and achievement. And so it can kind of give positivity around that as well. Um, you know, emotionally, you know, similar. Um, you know, I feel really it's something I feel really passionate about, but it's something that when I go out, I really enjoy. Um, I'm no different to anybody else. I run six days a week and I've been running for 13 years and I still have many days where I go oh, I'm now. Oh, you know, so and, I have to, to, and I have to, that yeah, now. I am not, don't worry, I am not jumping into my trainers and my running gear every time before I go out for a run. You know, there are many, many times when I think to myself, it's time for my run now, but 
I never regret a run when I get back from one. It's still just the kind of thing that you that you never regret. So, you know, it helps from that perspective. And socially, you know, I've met some amazing people through it. You know, I've been to races all around the all around the world and I've got some friends from from those places that, you know, I wouldn't have met otherwise. I meet some other incredibly inspirational people who are, you know, achieving so much with their own running. And, you know, as a member of a local club, I've got I've met friends in my social circle also through it. So, you know, and I go to kind of weekly track sessions and it, you know, it, it means that I have other people to run with and, and, and other people to join in with. So there's so many different ways that it, it can contribute, but it, it's also definitely given me a lot of um, confidence um, and enabled me. It's almost been the catalyst, if you like, for me to 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 change my life as well and to kind of you know change my career from from being employed to self-employed health coach so yeah yeah amazing I, I love that you said that there are some days that you don't want to go because I I still firmly believe that the hardest part is putting your trainers on it's by far just getting out of the door if you can get dressed and get out of the door you've already won in my book you just made it um so I love the fact that even though you've been doing it for 13 years there's still some days where you just cannot be bothered and you don't want to do it yeah and, and I think it's worth mentioning that it's it's normal to feel like that you, you that you haven't quit if you miss a day you know yeah uh, what I mean is you haven't failed if you miss a day you know it's, and it's just that you've missed a day or you just you know it, you can go tomorrow and and I think that's right and I think that's the point about habits in general isn't it that very often you know um we set out to do something and we can be too self-critical or beat ourselves up sometimes over the fact that you know if we fall off the wagon for a little bit or something slipped it's not about whether we are you know able to be some kind of saint and like never miss a day and do everything absolutely perfectly whether that's running whether it's diet whether it's our sleep whatever it is you know it's about how do we respond when those things do slip so can we pick it back up again yeah I think you know that's the critical thing and so you know if you do plan to have a run and you miss the run for any reason you know it's 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 about not saying oh well I've missed one so I might as well miss another one <laughs> you know or I've missed one and kind of beat yourself up over it but it's just about recognizing that for whatever reason it didn't fit it wouldn't fit but let's pick it back up again and get going and that's kind of the key to when something becomes a habit because actually it becomes easier to to pick it back up and bring it back into your yeah. life again yeah and you mentioned a word there that I'm so it's really close to my heart is the habits you know as as humans we're creatures of habit and so and so often we 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 dismiss that we don't take it we don't give it the the um attention that it deserves it just happens because it's habitual right it happens in the background it's just running or you know in the background but when we really do start to focus on our habits and start to look at them and declutter them and and or create really new uh, good new ones they can they're life-changing this is transformational stuff isn't it so we're at, as as we're chatting if you listen to this in real time it's new year's i think we're on what are we on the 4th of january obviously this is applicable regardless you know if it's like july it doesn't really matter but this is a time when so many people are picking up new habits and starting something and they might even be get, buying the new trainers right now and going thinking about starting running so um, let's talk about how to create some really good habits then or what what hurdles maybe we'll, we can experience because one of the things that does happen at this time of year when we're creating new stuff and new uh, new habits is that in February they stop. You know, so many people kind of give up by the, in the next few weeks. So what can we do to kind of minimise our our or increase our, our success rate? What do you reckon? Yeah, I mean, I think there's a number of things there. I think I think the first one is don't necessarily feel pressured into creating a new habit just because it happens to be the start of a new yeah. year. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's the big one, you know, and it's it's something that, you know, we're seeing an awful lot of at the moment. Um, you know, turn of the new year, and there's all sorts of shouting about new year, new you, and you know, um, you know, gym memberships and diet new diets and you know all that kind of thing and it's still quite a challenging time you know for people we're coming off the back of the Christmas period it's still you know winter time so it's cold it's dark nights 
Um, if you're anything like me, you know, you're not great at this particular time of the year with the low levels of daylight and that sort of thing. And it can be difficult to actually sort of get ourselves going. You know, people are trying to get back into the swing of work, trying to get kids back into the routine of school again. And so trying to overface yourself with, I've got to pick up a new habit or start mm. something new right now, you know, can be, can be, you know, can be setting yourself up for failure because it, basically you just kind of can't fit it in. So, you know, one thing is it, it, it might be a good time to start thinking about what you would like to do and maybe set yourself a goal of starting it in February, for example, or something like that. When things feel a little bit easier or even March time and sort of tie it in with the spring, that sort of thing is is um, is one thing I would say. Um, but then another thing I would say is if you are ready to, to kind of to, to do something now, um, don't make it too big. So, you know, make it something that is really manageable um and you know think about the process um rather than necessarily like a big outcome so so do have a goal but but actually think about enjoying the process of getting there and the things that you're going to do and maybe the changes that you're going to make um and kind of enjoying those as you go along rather than necessarily pinning everything on an exact outcome that sort of denotes success or failure for example yeah yeah I I, I there's so much value there that I, I do want again I want to go back and just highlight if that's all right firstly I completely agree you know it might not now might not be the time to to do something there's no you you no set point when you when you start anything you can start something whenever it doesn't have to be a full moon or a Monday or the start of a month or the start of a year or anything you can start it at you know, two o'clock on your average Wednesday, it makes no difference. You just have to want want to do it. The, it has to be right for you. So just even thinking about it is is enough and being curious about it and maybe doing a bit of Googling and research and just talking to people is a great starting point. Uh, so I think there's, there's a lot to be said for giving yourself some grace, you know, working under your, in your parameters. Um, and... The, the 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 second thing that I kind of want to pick up on is that you're right, you're absolutely right. You just even small. I'm a massive, massive, massive fan of every small step adds up. You know, one of my my sayings is um, you don't climb a mountain in one leap. It's all the small steps. So even a smaller goal that because you don't, didn't start off doing an ultra marathon and, and you didn't on that day when you were sat in your, your corporate office with all your mates, nobody was going, oh, I'm going to do 26 marathons. Come on, you're joining this. You'd have probably run a mile if they'd have said that. Like, come on, guys, let's all run 26 marathons. You'd be like, mm, time for another job. I'll just start talking to other people. Yeah, but that's where it ended up. So everything brilliant starts with just something little, you know. Um, and again, that's it's it, that's such a, a it, it's all about giving yourself a bit of grace again, isn't it? So when you when you start something new, how do how do we go about actually embedding that habit? So I think the first the first place to start really, um, and you know, it's 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 possibly an old cliche but you know it's it's knowing your why like why do you want to do it because you know there's a chance that at times it is going to get hard and when it gets hard we need something to refer back to in terms of why we want to keep going with it yeah. you know and that and that and that can be anything in life so you know I think that the first thing is we decide what it is that we want to do you know and I always like to try and think of that as being something positive so something that we want to gain ra rather than something that we want to lose or something that we want to stop, if you know what I mean, but try and try and frame it from a point of from a point of view of something that you want to gain from it. Mm -hmm. um, and then um, and then, you know, really think deeply about your why and your reason and what it is, why it is that you want to achieve it, because if you don't want it enough, then you know, it will fall by the wayside. And if you don't want it enough, maybe it's not the right thing that you want to put your time and your energy and your focus into anyway. Mm. So, you know, I think that the first place is definitely understanding what it is that you want to achieve in a positive way, in a positive sense, what you want to gain and why, what difference is it going to make to you? What impact is it going to have for you now in the future on your life, 
on the lives of those around you. You know, it doesn't even necessarily have to be focused all about you. Um, but yeah, you know, what is what is the real reason? What is the deep seated reason? And sometimes keep asking yourself why. You know, so why do I want this? Okay, why do I want that? Okay, why do I want that? And I think there's, you know, there's there's something which says if you kind of if you ask yourself a constant why to the to the to the, the the answer that you've come up with four or five times, then actually you really get down to the crux of what it is, the thing that really matters. Yeah, yeah, it's that that problem solving technique of your five whys, isn't it? And it's it's a great one to do. Um, and as you were talking, I was thinking, right, what was my why? Why did I start it? Because it, once I'd done the 10K, I've not really run any big distance since. I've kind of just messed about here and there, but it's not been, um, it's just not been a, a, anything major on my to-do list. I just enjoy every so often getting them out my trainers and off I go. But um, my my why back then was I, I, I wanted to just see if I could do it. I was really curious about, can I actually do this? Because I've what it it was something you said actually which was spot on it's something else something other people do you know and I'd always said oh I'm not a runner and I I was just curious to see whether I could actually do it if I put the effort into it um but you're right having that strong why gets you through the times where it's raining (laughs) or you know the, the tough times whatever whatever that might be for that particular habit those days where you're just feeling it um it's that vision, isn't it? Just being able to visualize the end goal. And this is why I'm doing it. And this is the feeling and it just, um, this is the picture that I want to get to. Yeah. And what, what do we do when there are them tough days, you know, when you, when you're in a critic is shouting really loud. <laughs> um, I think what we then do is we need to kind of, unless it's the very first time you've done it, um, you know, draw on the positives. So, you know, I always, um, I mean, I'm, I'm a health coach, but I'm also a running coach. So, you know, I do, I do coach um, beginners and improvers. And it's very much about being mindful and conscious when you're out doing your runs sometimes to have some of the positives to be able to latch onto. So that might be, you know, a feeling that you get whilst you're running. It might be, you know, the things that you you see if you're out in the countryside for example or something that might inspire you it might simply be when you get to the end of your run and you you know you've achieved you it had been one of the days when it had been tough to get out there but you got out there you know what's what's kind of your feeling you know within your body and within your mind when you get back and kind of bank those and store those and then you know if you then have the days where it's off to do things or you know to motivate yourself to do something whether it's running or or whatever it is you know draw on some of those positive memories that says you know I know that I'm going to get this from it if I can just push myself that step and go out and get it done yeah that and that in itself is such a, a great piece of um of advice right there just banking the the good times the the feeling really um and I bet you've got so many <laughs> banked and stored um again you reminded me because it was New Year's Eve just a couple few days ago and it was probably about five o'clock and I was chatting to my my daughter on on WhatsApp and she's always been into fitness and she's a fitness instructor um even though that's not a job anymore but she's been a fitness instructor and she was texting me going oh I'm just going to go for a workout and it planted the seed in my head uh, and I went, oh, I might go for a run. And I looked at the Couch to 10K app that I've got on my, my phone from whatever. And I thought, if I do it now, I'll be back at six o'clock. And how smug will I feel that I've done it on New Year's Eve? And it was that feeling that I, I'd banked from ages ago that when I go for a run, I just feel great that I've done it. You know, it's that inner smugness, you know, that, oh, I've done this. I can, you know, I feel really good about myself. And off I went and I came back and I felt amazing. You know, it it gave me exactly what I was looking for. So having those banked is is so so good. And it's quite easy to do as well. It's just about remembering them, isn't it? Yeah, it is. It's very much about being mindful about the times when you do go out. um, And, you know, like I say, just, just kind of tucking them away as thoughts as memories or you know for anybody that does journaling for example or that kind of thing or gratitude it's something that you can record in there and then you know you can almost look back on it um and 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 you know record it and and sort of use it as as 
you know reminders from from thoughts there so you know that's a that's another way to do it really yeah fantastic now we've talked about habits and, and obviously we've t- talked a lot about your running um your running journey I kind of want to touch on wellness just as an umbrella if that's all right um because it, you might not want to start running <laughs> You know, we've talked about it, but it might not be your bag and that's all right. But wellness is is something that, like we said right at the very beginning, is is important, but it's, it should be on our priority list. So if we want to kind of nudge our wellness up our pecking order, what can we do? What can we do to, to get started in um, in a quite a, a, an, an easier way? What, what, what would you recommend? Um. Yeah, I mean, you know, in, in terms of kind of, I mean, movement, movement and activity, you know, is is absolutely one of sort of the, the key areas to focus on. It, it almost trumps all all of us, to be honest with you, although it's kind of sleep comes very close. The, the two of them, are, you know, are, are, are pretty important in terms of in terms of having great wellness. But regardless of what it what it is, whether it is about, you know, something that you do to relax, whether it's um, an exercise or, or activity that you pick or whether it's, um, you know, based around, um, you know, changing your diet and nutrition and that kind of thing. I think the key thing really is to focus on things that you enjoy. Mm-hmm. So, you know, it's not about pushing yourself into something that makes you unhappy. It has to be something that you enjoy. <clears throat> and just going back to the exercise thing for a minute, you know, if somebody says to me, what's the best exercise to do? The best exercise to do is the thing that you enjoy the most, mm. because actually that means that you're more likely to stick with it and do it consistently and it'll become a part of your life. Yeah. So, you know, that's the main thing. Um, but I think the key thing around around wellness is valuing it and prioritizing it. And yeah. I think, you know, too often it's the thing that, you know, we we don't prioritize and we allow to slip when other things are going on. You know, everybody is busy. We have busy lives, careers, jobs, businesses, families, um, you know, life, you know, maintenance, that sort of thing. And it is the one thing that slips. And, you know, our health is very often the thing that we most take for granted. And we, we genuinely don't value it until we don't have it anymore. And I think we do have quite often a mindset of well that won't happen to me that won't happen to me until somebody gets a wake-up call and realizes it does happen to them um so you know it's about recognizing that doing things which are valuable for our health and wellness is important for us in terms of keeping us physically well and giving us you know an active long-lived life and a good health span it's important for our um our financial security for our you know so that we can run our businesses well so that we can perform best years as well as we can at work it's important for our families and those around us because we just kind of show up as better people we set great examples to kids and those around us if we show that we're prioritizing prioritizing our wellness as well and so it, it's something not to be you know pushed to the bottom of the pile mm. but something to be pushed up to the top of the pile yeah 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 I can't I don't disagree with anything that you've just said you're absolutely right it should it is something that we take for granted and again I was listening to you and thinking this and we've all done it right we've all done it I'm no different and it's such a shame it's this most it's probably the most valuable thing that we've got and yet we all just take it for granted this is why, again, this is a great time for us to start thinking about our wellness and, and what we can start to do every single day in such a small, in small stages. What can we, what tweaks can we actually make to just nudge wellness up our, up our priority list? And it can be small things, right? It doesn't have to be a massive big change. It's just um, one of the things that I did, I think it was a few years back, actually, was take the stairs. You know, that was I remember walking in, I had a meeting and it was something on the fifth floor and I'm not a big lift person anyway, um, but I'd always go to the lift as we all do. And I thought, I'm not doing that today. I'm going to take the stairs. Yes, I was shattered when I got, <laughs> got to the top, but it, I wasn't I wasn't late. I was fine. I, you know, I had a minute. And but again, I felt amazing. And it was just that s- small tweak. It's a, just a, a I'm going to start taking the stairs. And that we couldn't do that for a month and then add something else in. Yeah. 
yeah i mean there's there's loads of examples like that so you know taking the stairs is a great one um adding one different or one new fruit or vegetable to your you know to your diet um each week you know is another one just just one thing something that's new something that's different is is another one that you can do um aim to go to bed five minutes earlier yeah you know that's all it takes like five minutes earlier it's not about i need to go to bed two hours earlier or something like that and i haven't got the time you know aim for five minutes or aim for 10 minutes you know and then and and do, do that consistently for a while and then and then you know pull that forward a little bit yeah. um you know um create yourself 10 minutes to sit down and read you know um what did what I, I was reading something the other day that you know like read one page of a book a day that's 365 pages in a year kind of thing do you know what I mean like exactly. if you're not reading at the moment like just read one page and read one page every day and, and you're going to get through at least you're going to get through at least one book in a year which yeah. is probably one more than if you sit down and you look at a huge book and say I haven't got time to read the book you yeah. know it's not necessarily about reading the whole book but it's just about reading one page um you know and that one page will probably grow because you'll turn you'll it'll encourage you to turn the page and turn the page yeah so you know it's it's there's there's lots of little small things that we can do which are adding things in and um you know make a big difference yeah oh yes to all of that I love I one of the best things that I did and again we're going back quite a long time is give myself a bedtime you know I think as a child I, I rebelled against bedtime so much and now as an adult I love a, 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 my bedtime routine and I'm just looking now I've started because I don't drink enough water and I, I got myself a new bottle and again, it was my daughter that says, "Get you need a bottle that you love. Go and really spend time getting a, a really nice water bottle that you love and then make that your focus. And already I feel different. You know, I feel better just from making water a priority because there's nowhere. I, mean, I was always a cup of tea. But I've got my tea as well. So I was always drinking loads of tea, but not water. Again, it's a tiny little shift. Yeah, hydration's a, a great one, actually. Hydration is a perfect one. It can make such a difference and it's something that is so neglected and so, um, yeah, underestimated. So, yeah, that's a really good one. One extra glass of water a day and then you can build it up from there. Yeah, oh, I love these. It's so good. Right, so what can we, if you listen to this and you're wanting to get started, um, let's just have like three things that, maybe that you've noticed from working with all the different people that you do and just in, in your experience, if you could only focus on three things, what would it be? Um, move more, move mm -hmm. more and move regularly every day. And, oh. you know, even if that's only for 10 minutes, right. um, but, you know, move more, and move regularly. Um, and ideally, um, you know, move little and often throughout the day, um, but definitely um, make, make, make moving more um a non-negotiable part um sleep um is a big one um sleep is a, is hugely important um and you know can help with so many areas of life it can help give us more energy it can help manage our weight and you know weight gain um it can help improve our mood um you know sleep is a, is a huge one really so really focus on the quantity and the quality of your sleep um, and you know your sleep environment all those sorts of things so so that would be another one um and then what else would I say um probably hydration as well would be would be would be another good one so you know focus on making sure that you that you get enough um hydration mm -hmm. um yeah yeah good ones love it Nikki thank you so much for hanging out with us where can people find you um so um i've got a website um which is quite simply www.nickychamberlain.co.uk so you can find me there um i um issue a monthly newsletter so you can sign up for my monthly newsletter which is uh tips and, and wellness advice um, and also um, book a free discovery call via my website um in terms of my socials i'm most active on linkedin um, so look me up on LinkedIn. I would love to connect with uh, many more people on on LinkedIn. Um, again, that's where I share um, most of my um, most of my content. Um, Instagram as well. Um, you can you can find me as Nikki underscore Health underscore Coach on Instagram. But but um, most active on LinkedIn um, and obviously through my website. Um, and uh, yeah, you can uh, email me via that route as well. Fantastic, and it's Nikki with two Ks. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's N I K K I. Yeah, Nikki Brilliant. Chamberlain. Yeah. 
Okay. And all the links will be in the show notes. So definitely go find Nikki, follow her. She's got loads of tips that, um, that will just boost your wellness journey this year. So Nikki, thank you so much. I've loved chatting to you. Uh, it's just been such a fantastic, just a fa- fantastic hour. I've loved it. Um, and I hope to see you soon. Yeah, definitely. No, it's been fantastic talking to you as well, Barbara. Thank you so much. And uh, keep going with that running journey. Oh, yeah, <laughs> I'll try. <laughs>